Oh, hello, this is Professor Gilman, and today's video we're recording um, is for the X Factor examples. So I did a video <clears throat> a few days ago about how to do the X Factor method for factoring trinomials, um, and I said in that that the method was superior. And so I'm hoping that these examples today should give you proof uh, to why this method is superior to the AC method and give you a couple of more examples to follow along with. And so I'm going to simply factor this trinomial right here. Um, and by the x-factor method, I'm going to factor this into pairs. So I'm going to have 1x and 18x, 2x and 9x, 3x and 6x. And I believe those are all the factor pairs of 18. And then I'm going to make a little dividing line, and I'm going to factor the 50 now into its pairs. And so the pairs for 50 are 1 and 50, 2 and 25, 5 and 10. And I believe that's the only pairs uh, for those. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my x that I'm going to follow. And I'm going to start from the bottom of my factor pairs and work my way up. And so I'm going to have the 3x and 6x in the front of my x, and then I'm going to start with 5 and 10 and work my way up that way. Um, and so I actually have to put the 10 up here. I can't put the 10 down here because it has a GCF of 2 in common with the 6. So what I need to do is put the 10 up here and the 5 down here. And now I'm going to follow my x. 3x times 5 uh, gives me 15x. Sorry about that, 5. That's a 15. Okay. And 6x times 10 is going to give me a 60x. And so if I look and I subtract 60 from 15, I'm going to end up with 45x. And that is exactly what I want for this center term. And so that makes me happy. So I need a positive 60 and a negative 15. And so those are going to go on the same line. And so now my answer, I hope, is 3x plus 10 times 6x minus 5. And the last thing that I need to do is I need to check my signs here to make sure that they're right. And so by the distributive property, 3x times 6x is going to give me 18x squared. 3x times the negative 5 is giving me the negative 15x. And that's where this is coming from. That's why this x factor works is this is a part of the distributive property. And then I've got 10 times 6 is the 60x. And then 10 times the negative 5 is the negative 50. And I see that I do want negative 50 and a positive 45. And so my check works. And so this is the answer to the factored form of that uh, trinomial right there. Now, just, just to note, okay, and I'm going to scroll this up just a little bit, right? I would just like you to note for, the, for a minute that by the AC method, you would multiply the 18 and the 50 together and you would get 900 and then you would start doing the factor pairs of 900 right and that really makes me sad so hopefully you already are starting to see the benefit of the AC method now on to the next all right and again I'm going to do the factor pairs of 21x squared so you're going to have 1x and 21x uh, 3x and 7x, and that one's done. And now I'm going to do the factor pairs of 81. So I have 1 and, I mean, 84. I did that the last time I recorded this. Uh, 2 times uh, 42. Uh, 3 times 28. 6. Uh, oh, 4. Sorry. 4 times uh, 21. 6 times 14 and 7 times, let me scroll up just a little bit, uh, 7 times 12. Okay, so those are the factor pairs for that one. So again, I'm going to draw my x 
<clears throat> right? I'm going to put the 3x and 7x in the front, as is my custom, the x factor method. I'm going to start off with the 7 and the 12 and work my way up. Um, can't put the 7 down here, got to put the 7 up here and the 12 down here. That looks like an 8, so let's try and fix that up. Um, because I don't want to have the sevens on the same row, uh, that would be a GCF and that would be a no-no. So now I'm going to go ahead and follow my x. 3 times 12 is going to give me 36x. 7 and 7 is going to give me 49x. And is there a way that I combine those to get 80x? The answer to that is no, so that makes me sad. Um, so the 7 and the 12 aren't going to work. So I'm going to get rid of that. And the seven, and the seven and the twelve don't work. So instead of going to one and twenty-one, those are further apart. I'm going to go to the six and the fourteen. And again, the fourteen has to go up here, and the six has to go down here because of GCFs. And so three x times six is going to give me eighteen x. Seven x times fourteen is going to give me ninety x. I'm going to go ahead and, hey, is there any way to get 80x from these two? Yes, if I subtract. And so I need a positive and a negative. And so uh, I'm going to insert some space down here at the bottom. Oh. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I'm just trying to <laughs> center stuff in the video. All right, so here we go. So here's my... Here's my first one, right? So it's going to be 3x plus 14. Here's the second factor. There's your 7x minus 6. And of course, I do want to check, so I'm going to use my distributive property. 3 times 3x times 7x is 21x squared. 3x times a negative 6 is going to give me negative 18x. 7 times um, 14 is going to give me my positive 90x. And that does give me my positive 80 that I wanted. And then 14 times 6 is going to give me that negative 84 because of the negative sign right there. And I did want it to be negative. Um, so that makes me happy. So that checks my signs. So this is the correct answer right there is the factored form and again I just I want you to know that if you were using the a c method you would have multiplied those together and gotten seven one thousand seven hundred sixty four from my calculator and you would start doing the factor pairs of that to then do grouping to then try oh my lord that's so sad and so what I hope you've seen from today from these examples is how to use the X factor method and why it's superior to the AC method. And if I did that today, um, then I was successful and that makes me happy. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.